Hi, I'm Scott Hall. I'm a Technical Success Manager for Fortinet's 40NDR Cloud product. Today we're going to be taking a look at a detection uh, that we received. We're going to gather information about the impacted hosts, uh, determine whether or not an incident response is needed, and then uh, make a recommendation. So let's go ahead and get started. So we received a notice that uh, two hosts on our network triggered a detection rule related to uh, a TrickBot. So this is a TrickBot staging download. Looks like uh, from the description that's given, uh, it looks like uh, it's a, a, a pretty common tool and it, uh, that adversaries use. Uh, and what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be verifying that the download took place, and then we're gonna follow along with the next steps to make a determination of whether this is uh, valid and an incident response is needed. So let's go ahead and gather uh, all of the information that we need. The first thing that we see uh, are uh, the list uh, or the, the two hosts that uh, triggered the detection on our network. We've got their IP addresses, the number of times that uh, the detection has been uh, triggered since it went active, and we have some indicators related to uh, that activity and also the last time that it was seen. Um, first, let's uh, take a look at the, uh, the detection signature to see what the detection is looking for. Looks like it's looking for a specific user agent and a specific response MIME type coming back from the sensor. Um, we have the events that matched that detection rule here as well, and uh, it looks like it's going to be uh, these from the, uh, the 21st. Uh, these uh, HTTP events, and here are two impacted hosts, 10.10.31.5 and 10.10.31.101. Uh, looks like they both uh, made contact with an external IP address outside of our network over port 80. Um, and it does look like uh, the URI that was, uh, uh, that it tried to reach Looks like it was attempting to disguise itself as a PNG file uh, based on the URI, uh, but the response MIME type uh, that came back from the server indicates that it is a, uh, a uh, Windows executable. Uh, so just verifying the, the things that we've seen, um, we have a specific user agent uh, that was being looked for and that matches. And the other thing that we were looking for was uh, a um, a response from the server of a Windows download. And the status code indica indicates that it was a successful download. All right, so let's, uh, let's gather some required information uh, that we'll need. Uh, first, let's figure out um, some information about the impacted hosts. Uh, the first host that we have, 1010.31.5. Uh, uh, if I click on it, it's gonna bring up uh, the entity panel on the right-hand side. Uh, this is all the historical information that 40NDR Cloud maintains about uh, the uh, all of the IP addresses and domain names and file hashes uh, that are observed in our network traffic. So this is all historical information. Um, I'm going to narrow our time frame down to the date of um, the, the 21st, that's when the alert uh, was related to. So let's see what information we have about this IP address on that date. Uh, first thing I want to check is going to be the uh, whether or not we have any passive DNS. Um, it does look like we have passive DNS and it's called Micro Island DC. That's a little bit unusual uh, because our, uh, our internal network is Acme. That, that's unusual. Um, we also see that it has a, uh, it's related to another detection in our environment. And uh, we have DHCP information. So uh, we now know that uh, the host name is accounting WKS004, and we have a MAC address here. So we're going to make note of that, and we'll add that to any investigation uh, if we uh, decide that we need to open an investigation. Uh, let's see if we can find some user information related to this host by clicking on the Accounts tab. Uh, so here, uh, this is historical Kerberos and NTLM 
uh, data. It looks like we only have Kerberos uh, information on this date. So um, what I'm seeing here is uh, accounting workstation or accounting WKS um, 00. Uh, that looks like uh, that matches uh, you know what we were seeing in the uh, the or the, it's in the Acme Corp. So uh, the the host name accounting WKS 00. Um, and it looks like we also see user M. Williams uh, associated via Kerberos with this IP address. So we'll just make note of uh, this stuff and, um, and and we'll add that to an investigation. The final thing I want to check is I want to check uh, the software that's been observed uh, in relation to this IP address just to see if I can determine what type of host um, we're dealing with. And based on you know some of the the things that uh, I am, am seeing here, I'm going, going to make the assumption that this is a Windows host. Um, it does not look like we have any EDR installed on this host, um, so I, I can't make a, uh, a complete determination. But I'm going to say that this is probably a Windows host. All right, so we've got uh, DHCP information, we've got passive DNS information. And we've got some user account information um, that we've gathered. So we'll, we'll add that to a report if we need to. Um, next, let's check the other host uh, on our network. It looks like uh, it triggered uh, the detections a, uh, about 20 minutes, 25 minutes after the, uh, the first host. So let's see what information we have about, uh, about this host. Um, since we're still in the the software tab here this host also looks like it is a windows host just based on the names of the software although i i do see like some unusual uh named uh software here uh the, this test as well as win http loader i'm not familiar with those two um that those may be interesting Let's see uh, what kind of account information we can gather about uh, this host. Uh, uh, there's references to that micro island again. Uh, that's unusual. But we also see references here um, for sales WKS 34. And that is our standard naming scheme on our network. And Acme Corp is uh, our corporate net network. Um, so th this uh, this is interesting in and of itself that we see this uh, microisland.net uh, Kerberos uh, information, and we saw uh, on the previous host the passive DNS. Uh, the naming convention made it look like it was a domain controller for microisland. So that that is also suspicious that an accounting workstation would be uh, trying to impersonate a domain controller. Um, don't know if it's related or not, but we'll make note um, uh, of all these things. All right, so we've got um, uh, user information and software information for this host. Just check the uh, passive DNS. Passive DNS also shows that it's standard naming convention for our network, sales WKS uh, 345. So this is a, um, a, a workstation, a Windows workstation on our network. All right, so uh, we have information about our internal hosts. Now let's see what we can find out about the IP address that the files were downloaded from. Looks like there's two separate files here. Um, so by clicking on the IP address, we bring up the entity panel. And um, right off the bat, I see uh, lots of references in VirusTotal related to this, uh, this IP address that's sending red flags. Um, other things uh, that are interesting is the absence of, of other data. So we don't have any passive DNS information for this. So that means we've never seen a host on our network do a DNS lookup that got this IP address as a response. So that implies that uh, any communication with this has been done directly to the IP address and not via domain name. That's typically a red flag as well. Um, and looking at the raw events uh, that are in the detection here, I do see that the HTTP host that was referred to is an IP address. It is not a uh, fully qualified domain name here. 
So we have a, an internal host going to an IP address, downloading a, uh, a file that uh, a, a Windows executable that's been renamed to look like a um, um, uh, an image file. And it looks like there, there's two of, of these, each one downloaded uh, a separate one. All right. Um, so just uh, just quickly here, let's uh, see what we have uh, for information about who owns uh, this uh, IP address. Uh, it looks like it's owned by Total Server Solution, and there's a reference down here to Performive. Um, I'm not really familiar with that. It, it might be uh, you know a, a virtual server provider. I can I can dig into that later, but uh, I I can tell right off the bat it is not a hosting provider that I'm familiar with or that I've seen uh, our um, uh, systems communicate with. All right, now let's get some information about the file that was downloaded. Um, we'll, we'll just check these out. Uh, by clicking on this uh, this files link within the HTTP event, uh, I have access to any of the uh, the hashes that were generated uh, on on the file. So I'm going to click on the SHA-256 here and pull up its entity information. And uh, the fact that uh, I do have PE information, this means that it is a definitely a Windows executable. Uh, we've done some static analysis on it. Um, and we can also see that uh, just from the summary that VirusTotal uh, has recognized this uh, in 57 out of 69 scans as being malicious. Um, so I'd, I'd say that this is uh, probably, uh, this is definitely something that we want to follow up on. Um, so we'll make note of, uh, you know, the hash and the VT verdicts and the fact that it's a Windows file. And now let's check the uh, the second one here. Let's close that out, and we'll check the All right, now let's close this out and we will check the uh, the second file, this tabl1.png. Same thing, we'll click on the file, we'll find the SHA-256, we'll click on it. All right, uh, this one also it is definitely a Windows executable. We've got PE information uh, on it. We've got uh, lots of verdicts from VT, um, in, including Fortinet's identifying uh, as Emotet, everybody else uh, ha has their own uh, names for this uh, particular family and uh, this particular file. But uh, th this is definitely a malicious uh, file. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to start an investigation now because we're going to have to follow up and run a couple searches uh, to to do the the other verifications here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, the investigation and uh, it's going to rerun the query uh, that we um, used to, to trigger the detection. And I'm just going to create that. And I'm going to jump over to it now and add a note uh, as we begin looking at the uh, uh, the next steps. All right, just quickly add a note here. So here we've got uh, the IP addresses of the internal hosts that uh, were impacted, uh, the the names of the hosts that we found, the uh, the MAC addresses, all the DHCP information. Uh, and information about the external host uh, as well. 
and the uh, the files downloaded and the SHA-256s. All right, so the uh, the follow-up said that the, the next things that we need to do are check for outbound 447 and uh, outbound 449 uh, communication. So let's add a query here. And for this query, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm gonna look for just outbound traffic from the, uh, the two impacted IP addresses. So I'm looking for the source IP being one of our two workstations and dest internal equal false, meaning we're going outbound, destination port 447, 449. And I'm gonna aggregate those on the source and destination IP and uh, we'll run that for the, the previous seven days. Uh, and the other thing that it wanted us to check for was were there previous um, executable downloads um, prior to the triggering of this TrickBot staging download detection. So I'm going to add another query as we wait for this one to, uh, to finish. And in this query, I'm doing the same thing. I'm looking for the source being the, the two impacted uh, hosts and the response MIME type being a... Uh, Windows executable, and I'm going to group it by the HTTP host that uh, it was retrieved from, as well as the URI, and I'm going to sort this in uh, ascending order uh, because I want to see it chronologically. Let's we'll go over the past seven days here, and uh, let's add that query as well. And while that's running, let's review uh, our first query. So we've got. Um, uh, outbound 447 and 449, and yes, we we do have traffic. So it looks like uh, host 101031.5 communicated with two hosts, and uh, the 31.101 also communicated with two hosts. They were not the same hosts, though. Um, but there is evidence of uh, port 447, 449 communication. And we can view those events by clicking the events tab and we can see that uh, these this is SSL communication over these ports. Uh, so, you know, let's uh, do this in chronological order here. Uh, looks like uh, we begin with some port 449 uh, traffic, then some 447 to a different IP address. And we saw more than 100 uh, events. So it, it looks like this was pretty active uh, communication, but the aggregation here shows that yes, we do have uh, the, the traffic. The aggregation uh, encompasses all events, uh, whereas the, uh, the events table is just gonna show me, uh, I told it to only show the, the first 100 that came back. If we wanted to get all of them, we could, but this is confirmation right here that we do have traffic between uh, those hosts on those ports. All right, let's look at the uh, the final uh, test uh, that we need to have uh, to make a determination if it's a trick bot or not, it is looking for previous uh, Windows executable downloads. And it does look like we have a number. Uh, so from one IP address, we see the uh, two that triggered the detection or re were related to the detection. And then there's a third also from that IP that did not trigger that particular detection. And uh, we have some from other uh, hosts as well. Looking chronologically here, um, we see the, uh, the, the two uh, Table one and scrim. These are the ones that triggered our detection. And prior to that, we do see other executable downloads. Um, it, it looks like it began about two hours before uh, we got the TrickBot detection. So I think it's uh, it's safe to say that we uh, have a disposition here that this is malicious, and that we need to follow up with our standard incident response uh, procedures. Uh, so let's go ahead and make a note of that, and we will let the IR team know uh, that um, these hosts need to be remediated. There we go. We've uh, triaged the detection, and we have uh, made, made a verdict and uh, passed it along for remediation. 
It's pretty quick, pretty easy. All the information was right there for us. Thank you very much.